G'day, g'day, and welcome. It has been said that a guitar speaker's tone will subtly shift over the first 100 hours of use before settling on a tone it grows into. There are many opinions out there about how to break in speakers properly, but I'm not here to debate that because either way, the goal is the same. Speaker vibrations cause the fibers in the cone to relax and become more pliable, eventually settling into its own unique character. I chose to play chords continuously on a loop for the first three days and then pink noise for the rest. Now let's do a blind test. You're about to hear two samples of this Celestian El Nico Cream. One, when the speaker had less than two minutes of use and the other, once it had reached 100 hours worth of continuous breaking in. Can you tell which one is which? Fair warning though, you're going to need quality headphones or speakers for everything in this video because all the differences, if any, are going to be subtle and easily missed using your phone, iPad, or even laptop speakers. Let's get to it. No reveal this time. Leave a comment below with your guess and I will share the answer in a week or two, giving more viewers a chance to participate. This is a new channel after all. Disclosure. I would absolutely love to tell you that Celestian sponsored this video or any other speaker brand for that matter. WGS, Weber, Jensen, Lawrence, Eminence, Electro, Voice or Mojo Tone, just to name a few. If you're watching, I would love to work with you. But let's be honest, with between one and 200 subscribers at the time of this video's release, no. I just love guitar speakers and this El Nico Cream has been on my wish list for a while. Bear with me just a little bit longer as I explain how everything got tested. But if you're one of those eager beavers, go nuts, it's all time stamped. If you wanna know the legitimacy of my testing, this SM57 did not move the whole time. All the guitar loops you're going to hear in this video was played through the RC3 looper into this Sherlock Amplifiers V3 tube preamp. The microphone was positioned to the millimeter at the edge of cone for everything you're hearing. The cab is my one of a kind custom oversized open back Isaac 1x12 cab. The DAW is Reaper. The re interface is the Midas MR18. The power amp used for everything is the Crown. 1000 watt power amp. Obviously, I'm not putting a whole thousand watts through this. That would be stupid. In order for to ensure that everything stayed accurate, I needed to be insanely precise. Every single setting on every device was meticulously noted and exactly replicated every single time a sample was captured inside of a sound closet. Believe me when I tell you that I did everything I could think of to ensure that the only differences we hear, if any, are the result of the speaker itself changing as it's been broken in. You're going to hear both clean and distorted samples recorded in 24 hour increments over seven days worth of continuous breaking in. They do say 100 hours is more than enough, but I needed to make sure. Seven straight days equals 144 hours. All right, let's get started with the clean samples.
let's take a moment to get technical. If you're not familiar with Room EQ Wizard, it is software designed to measure audio devices, rooms, and speakers. Of course, every test was created in exactly the same way using exactly the same gear. We are going to see in great detail what changes there actually are. You'd have already noticed these graphs playing with the samples. That's because this is where I've got them from. So we line them all up together. There are many minor differences throughout the whole entire frequency spectrum. But let's be honest, you won't audibly notice most of them. So I'll keep the focus on the main noteworthy areas or we'll be here all bloody day. So we, as we can see, we're up until around 614 hertz. They're all practically identical. So it has dropped roughly 0.7 decibel and it has shifted from 614 to 626 hertz. And as you can see, just around here at 687, up until 801, where it was, has a little bit of a cut, it's now rounded completely off around the 740. There is a point, a whole decibel boost in that frequency and the whole entire curve has changed. Now we'll just keep moving along, minor differences. Here's a good one, 16, 1.6K. You can see it's boosted, easy 0.7 decibels and it has shifted a little bit higher in the peak. Mm, here's another one at 1,942 hertz, or well, give or take. You can see that there is half a decibel drop and a slight shift. Here is another obvious one. So where there was a little bit of a, 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 a cut, really, is now rounded itself off and has yeah, boosted itself up, half a decibel. Here's another obvious one, 2.37K. One, two, three, yeah, basically a whole decibel. Here's another one. And again, there's more of a valley at 3.3K. Let's have a look up here. So it's all basically the same, Some slight shifts. And it peaks at around 5.5K before it starts rolling down. That's dropped down about a half a decibel. And yes, I can see that the graph continues on, but you don't actually audibly hear that because everything above it all these frequencies overpower that. You just, you'll never hear it. So it really does roll off at 5.5K. Separate them for a moment. So you can see them differently for a sec. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. Let's play the distorted sample now. So if you're going to hear a difference, here should be the spot. liking this video please help me grow this channel by giving me a thumbs up and subscribing it costs nothing helps the algorithm and lets me know I'm doing a good job 
Smack that cowbell if you want to be notified when the next episode is released. Ooh, do you have an IR loader? Do you have access to one? Because I want to include you in this experiment as well. At the time of recording each sample you heard, I also created impulse responses with the plan to give you all seven. So you can load them up, test them for yourself and make your own observations. And then come back here and comment and share your findings in this video. Your input would be hugely appreciated. The link to the IRs are in the description. Shared directly from my Google Drive, no sign up, no mucking around, just quality impulse responses for you to play with. I'm gonna leave you now with me having a little play on this strap. It's loaded with hot rail pickups. If you see me pulling this volume pot, that's because it's coil split. Up is single coil, down is humbucker. I'm gonna use the Tonex platform and just one preset and I'm gonna play each IR randomly. Hopefully give you an idea if you don't have an IR loader. Thank you very much for sharing your time with me. Keep a lookout for the reveal video where I also hope to go through many of the comments. Till then, have fun, keep it rocking. Thank you.